Welcome into another edition of Just the Truth. Glad to have you as I broadcast from the PhD Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. Former President Trump reacted to the, quote, monumental hearing on presidential immunity at the Supreme Court yesterday, saying he thinks it was made clear that a president has to have immunity. We got details on what the court heard yesterday. And in an opinion piece titled Bidenomics Strikes Again, Shocking Numbers of Full-Time Jobs Lost Over the Past Five Months. That's a decline of 1.33%, by the way, over a five-month period. Excluding job losses related to the COVID-19 lockdowns in 2020, the recent drop in full-time employment is the largest five-month decline since the Great Recession in 2009. 15 years ago, Justin Haskins wrote uh, wrote an opinion piece published yesterday who gets into the details. Uh, you're going to want to hear this. Also, protests at colleges around the country are not showing any signs of going away anytime soon. In fact, it appears they're only growing as the Sabarine News reported that Iran-backed Iraqi militias are inciting American students to escalate university protests against Israel. A federal appeals court has upheld a decision to revoke an Alaska man's pilot certificate after he delivered marijuana by plane to retail stores around his state. And we're seeing a massive growth in the South because people are leaving blue states in droves. This may get more difficult to do as those states are looking for ways to keep these residents hostage. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your comments to the Farm and Ford text line. Leave me a voice message. Send me an email directly to joey at joeyhudson.com. I told you we'd be back. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. It's Joey Hudson. On our guest line this morning, Senator Tim Scott. Thank you for listening to one of the best radio shows. Joey, God bless your leadership. Joey, congratulations on your new show. I just wanted to let you know that I always appreciate your perspective and your common sense approach to the issues. You know what? If people like you keep telling us the truth, believe me, we're paying close attention. Let your voice be heard. And the truth shall set you free. Here's Joey Hudson. Former President Donald Trump reacted to what he called a monumental hearing on presidential immunity yesterday at the Supreme Court, saying that he thinks it was made clear that a president has to have immunity. Trump was speaking to reporters after sitting in a Manhattan courtroom for hours yesterday, the seventh day of his criminal trial stemming from Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg's investigation. Trump, of course, has pleaded not guilty to all 34 charges of falsifying business records. While Trump sat in court listening to witness testimony, the U.S. Supreme Court was hearing arguments on the issue of presidential immunity and whether he is immune from prosecution in a separate case, Special Counsel Jack Smith's case related to the 2020 election interference. Now, Trump had requested to attend the arguments in Washington, D.C., because yesterday was a pretty big day for Donald Trump and the U.S. Supreme Court. But the New York judge, Juan Merchant, rejected his request uh, and has required Donald Trump to be in court for each day of his criminal trial. Trump, speaking to reporters as he left yesterday, says, I was forced to be here, and I'm glad I was because it was a very interesting day in a certain way. Saying that the U.S. Supreme Court had a monumental hearing on immunity, here's President Donald Trump. But the U.S. Supreme Court had a uh, monumental hearing on Immunity and the immunity having to do with uh, presidential immunity. And I think it was made clear, I hope it was made clear, that a president has to have immunity. You don't have a president. Or at most you can say it would be a ceremonial president. That's not what the founders had in mind. They're not talking about ceremonial. We want presidents that can get things done and bring people together. So I heard the meeting was uh, quite amazing. Quite amazing, and the justices were on their game. So uh, let's see how that all turns out. But again, I say presidential immunity, very powerful presidential immunity is imperative, or you practically won't have a country anymore. Thank you very much. Thank you. Trump echoed his past argument that without immunity, the president would be reduced to just a ceremonial position. The former president said the Supreme Court justices were on their game, So let's see how it turns out, he said. The Supreme Court heard arguments from John Sauer, 
who delivered arguments on the matter on behalf of President Trump and 2024 presumptive Republican presidential nominee. Michael Dreeben, a Justice Department prosecutor, delivered arguments on behalf of the government and special counsel Jack Smith. The high court is expected to rule on this matter sometime in mid-June. Justin Haskins is the director of of the Socialism Research Center at the Heartland Institute and a New York Times bestselling author. He published an opinion piece yesterday titled Bidenomics Strikes Again, Shocking Number of Full-Time Job Loss Over the Past Five Months. Mr. Haskin writes, as the Biden White House continues to brag about the alleged success of its economic policies, government data shows the country is hemorrhaging full-time jobs. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the number of Americans reporting full-time employment dropped by more than 1.7 million jobs from November 2023 to the end of March of this year, the most recent month that data is available right now. Mr. Haskin points out that this is a decline of 1.33% over a five-month period. And he goes on to explain that excluding job losses related to the COVID-19 lockdowns in 2020, when we saw massive uh, layoffs because businesses were closing, the recent drop in full-time employment, according to Mr. Haskins, is the largest five-month decline since the Great Recession in 2009, 15 years ago. And Joe Biden's traveling around the country bragging about job growth. Haskin goes a little deeper. He says, before that, the last time the number of full-time jobs declined this much over a similar period was in 1994. Despite these remarkable figures, the Biden administration has continued to boast about its economic policies, he writes. For example, on April the 11th, the White House's official X account claimed, under Bidenomics, our economy has created 15 million jobs and unemployment has remained under 4% for the longest stretch in 50 years. The Biden administration has made similar claims for months of the president's time in office. At best, he says they're wildly misleading. Although it's true that total employment has increased, he says, and it's increased dramatically since Biden entered the White House, the vast majority of those jobs were recovered from the coronavirus-related government lockdowns. They're not created jobs. They're not new jobs. Compared to employment figures recorded in January 2020, immediately prior to COVID-19, this was just as we were going into this nightmare period, the number of jobs added under Biden's tenure is just 2.98 million real jobs, which is an unimpressive figure compared to many of his predecessors. During Donald Trump's first three years, for example, if you, again, the first three years before you get into COVID, the Trump economy added 6.33 million jobs. That's more than double the number of jobs of true jobs created during Joe Biden's administration. These numbers are made even more remarkable by the fact that excluding again the 2020 coronavirus lockdown, Biden's government has spent more money in a 3-year period than any other president get this now in history. Let me read that again. Biden's government has spent more money in a three-year period than any other president in the history of our country. Two of the four highest federal deficits ever recorded have occurred under Joe Biden. And a third, he writes, the $1.4 trillion deficit in 2009 happened while Biden was serving as Barack Obama's vice president. He goes on, Biden's economic agenda of dramatically increasing the size and power of government programs, raising taxes, and imposing increasingly more regulations on businesses has been a complete and utter failure. Not only has it been killing full-time jobs in recent months, it also is the driving factor behind America's lingering inflation problem. As difficult as it is for Biden White House to, to understand, When a government consistently spends far more money than it receives in tax revenue and turns to money printing policies to pay the bills, inflation increases. That is simple economics. We we learned about that in Economics 101 when we were in school. 
He continues that when inflation gets out of control, as it has been for years now, most people get poorer. Based on the Consumer Price Index's inflation estimates, an American family buying $200 worth of groceries in January of 2021, when Joe Biden first took office, would have to spend $238 today to purchase the same products. You got that? $200 worth of groceries before Joe Biden now costs $238 in just three years. Most Americans can barely afford to pay basic living expenses because we haven't seen our incomes increase that dramatically, have we? The average cost of rent has increased dramatically as well. The average sales price of a home and the cost of mortgages have skyrocketed. The cost of purchasing a new car has increased by thousands of dollars in just a few years. He wraps things up by writing, the American people are suffering under the Biden administration's economic agenda. And based on the recent full-time jobs data outlined earlier in this article, the situation is not likely to improve while Biden's failing policies remain in place. Amen, brother. He's right. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Love to get your comments on the Furman Ford text line. You know, it's, it's the, 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 the question that Ronald Reagan asked Jimmy Carter. Are you better off now than you were four years ago? I'd love to get your comments. Get, send me some examples. Send me some specific examples of things that are costing you more money today than they were three years ago. 864-477-5639. Send them on the Furman Ford text line. Protests at colleges around the country are not showing any signs of going away. We've talked about this about all week. In fact, it appears that they're only growing. Uh, as the Sabarine News reported that Iran-backed Iraqi militias are inciting American students to escalate university protests against Israel. I've got the details on that. First, let me talk with you about PhD weight loss and nutrition. Do you need to lose some weight? Are you wanting to do it before we head into the summer? Uh, this is, what, April the 26th? If you start right now, if you call 864-252-4925, do it today. Get your consultation set up. They'll work you in next week. You can get started, and by the beginning of June, you can be talking about losing 10, maybe 20 pounds. As you get into the summer, that excess weight is just going to melt off of you. If you've been listening to me for any length of time, you know about my journey with Dr. Ashley Lucas and her team at PhD Weight Loss Nutrition. Almost four years ago now, I lost 30 pounds pretty quickly, and I've kept it off for those four years. So if you're listening today and you're still on the fence, you just can't quite make that decision, what are you waiting for? The program works. If you want to lose weight, but more importantly, get healthy, because Dr. Ashley Lucas' program is based on the science of nutrition, what to eat, when to eat, and how to eat. Not only will you lose the weight, you're going to get healthy in the process. You'll feel better. You'll be able to focus better. You'll be able to sleep better. There's a long list of great benefits of losing that excess weight. Call today, 864-252-4925. Let them know that you heard it here on Just the Truth. Set up your consultation so that you can start your journey with Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition. Visit them online at myphdweightloss.com, the official partner of the Clemson Tigers. The Sabarine News, which is a Telegram channel affiliated with the Iran-backed Iraqi militias, is inciting American students to escalate university protests against Israel, according to some posts on this channel. Per the Middle East Media Research Institute's Jihad and Terrorism Threat Monitor, the Telegram channel shared multiple photos of anti-Israeli protests across the U.S. this week. A post on the channel said, From Columbia University to Brown University, we will not abandon Gaza. The students in American universities chant during their sit-in solidarity of Palestine. And it has photos of American students or protest on these American campuses all around our country. Reacting to a clip of House Speaker Mike Johnson speaking at 
the Columbia University on Wednesday of this week. The channel blamed the U.S. government for atrocities committed in Gaza. Another post mocked police for dealing with anti-Israel protests at UT Austin, saying that the incident was indicative of how free speech is dealt with in the U.S. Uh, they're referencing the fact that they sent in troopers on horseback. They shut that one down real quick. There's not any negotiating going on on the campus of UT Austin today between students and, and faculty on whether or not they can have their campus back. They got arrested. <laughs> it's just that simple. Uh, another post included a photo of of, uh, of Hitler laughing in response to a statement from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu saying that there ought to be wider condemnation of the anti-Israel protests on American universities. I mean, if you look at the headlines, you read some of the reports, students at a growing number, and it is spreading now, because uh, that's what they're doing. They're planting these seeds all around the country, hoping to turn it into another summer like we saw a Black Lives Matter protest. That's what we could be facing uh, th this summer, folks. Students refusing to leave these college campuses. The protest began with about 100 students at Columbia University in New York City. It has spread from Massachusetts to California to Tennessee to Texas and places in between. The protests come, of course, as Israel-Hamas uh, war has uh, recently surpassed a six-month milestone. It's resulted in tens of thousands of deaths. The stories of suffering in Gaza have sparked international calls for ceasefire and protests around the world. But yet, Prime Minister Benjamin, Benjamin Netanyahu knows that he has to finish the job. And he appears to be inclined to do so. In Boston, for example, newly released body camera footage from the Boston Police Department shed some light on a police officer's interaction with anti-Israel demonstrators as protests continued to rage on that campus and others. The body camera footage shows an unidentified police officer. He approaches a group of demonstrators. This is at Emerson College. They're on a street corner in front of a public alley entryway into the Massachusetts City. It was 1.30 a.m. in the morning yesterday. Listen to the officer as he's trying to talk some reason into these agitators. So I'm trying to work with you all. Trust me. We're not the enemy on this. We're indifferent. So I'm going to ask you all, you know, you guys been protesting all day. I get it. Listen, I get it and I support what you're trying to do. However, at this point, it's late. People live here. We're getting a lot of complaints. We let it go for a while. We're supposed to come down about 10 p.m. We're looking to give you your space and let you all do this. Okay, but at a certain point, they all they got to go to work in the morning as well. So we're trying to be reasonable with all them. Right? So, again, I'm not looking to try to be unreasonable. I gave you guys several hours extra. I do not want to arrest anybody. I promise you. I want you all to go back to school tomorrow, finish your finals, be a protest. We're just going to do it the right way. That's all I ask. We don't want to... We don't want to escalate to do anything. So again, I've done a lot of these. We're always reasonable. We don't want to arrest anybody. Trust me. We all want to go home just like we want you to go home tonight. So I'm, I'm welcome. I'm free to answer any questions. Um, speak to anyone who wants to speak to me. But just going to let you know, we've we got to open up. Free, free Palestine! 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 Free, free As you heard, the protesters just ignored the officer and started chanting again. You, you can see in the video that the officer starts talking in his radio and the other officers start preparing to what appear to be uh, to, to make arrest. These kids just don't get it, do they? They had this entire road blocked off. I watched this video. People who lived in the neighborhood couldn't go to their homes. The businesses in the area, uh, employees couldn't get to the businesses. Some employees could not leave. The area was noisy. People couldn't sleep. They couldn't live their lives. And yet these kids don't understand why the police were very pleasantly. I thought they, I thought they, were, uh, they demonstrated great restraint in trying to talk some sense into these idiots' heads. Meanwhile, a group of counter-protesters 
marched toward the campus of Columbia University yesterday, where the campus, of course, has been rocked by the demonstrations against Israel all week. They literally uh, canceled classes or actually changed classes on Monday to virtual learning because students couldn't get to their classes. The scene followed uh, this week of anti-Israel protests that has just upended the campus. Uh, The university said early yesterday that it was in talks with student organizers to end the encampment. Now, the counter-protesters said they would speak the love of God over all of our enemies and would sing and smile and pray, and all of America will see a church that is unmoved. The counter-protesters carried Israeli and American flags. They called for the release of hostages taken by Hamas uh, during the October 7th terror attack in Israel. Have you noticed? You haven't heard these protesters, these anti-Israel protesters, talk very much about the hostages, have you? Or the release of the hostages. Columbia University said uh, their, their, their president put out a statement. Now, president uh, Minouk Shafiq said that uh, she's been in talks with New York City Mayor Eric Adams at the campus braces for more anti-Israel demonstrations going into the weekend. The university said that they're anticipating another night of protests or were uh, anticipating another night of protests last night. A university spokesperson said there's an enhanced security around the campus and a faculty or student ID is required to enter the area. And they said that they're that they've been in dialogue with student organizers to discuss the dismantling, the encampment, and dispersing. Now, the first thing that stuck out to me as I read a couple of these statements, and, and I've kind of summarized this for you, they, they all talk about how we're in talks, we're negotiating. What does that mean exactly when you're in talks with students who are taking over a campus when they're not supposed to be? Where are the adults? You don't negotiate with these kids to bring order back to the campus. You do what Texas Governor Greg Abbott ordered at the University of Texas in Austin. Send troopers in on horseback and clear the area. It's just that simple. Give them a chance to leave. If they don't, start mass arrest. Get out, get out the, uh, the handcuffs or the zip ties. That's how you get these kids attention and this is the problem some areas are backing down turning over the campus to these young misguided thugs a video on x from the party for socialism and liberation shows students at northeastern university for example cheering as police leave what the group described as a gaza solidarity encampment per local reports from media there an anti-israel encampment formed yesterday on the university centennial common Dozens of people, including students and faculty, faculty should be fired on the spot, formed a ring around the encampment, drawing a response from police officers who very politely asked them to leave. Police later were withdrawn, prompting cheers from the crowd. Uh, A video of the scene shows the crowd shouting, cops off campus, cops off campus. Listen to this for a moment. Seriously, when do you stop this nonsense? When do you send the troopers in on horseback like they did in Texas to stop this? This is truly letting the inmates run the asylum, is it not? UT Austin on Thursday said that nearly half of those arrested this week in the anti-Israel demonstrations there were not affiliated with the university. The university said that the protests organized by the Palestine Solidarity Committee saw significant participation by outside groups present on our campus yesterday. This outside group presence is what we've seen from the affiliated national organization's efforts to disrupt and create disorder, UT and Austin said in their statement. Roughly half, 26, of the 55 people who violated institutional rules and were ultimately arrested were unaffiliated with the University of Texas. And, and that's, that's some of the reports we've seen or, or heard, is that you've got these 
uh, these uh, Iranian militia groups trying to encourage people and trying to encourage these students to disrupt daily life on the campus. They're sending people in. And who knows? George Soros may be paying them. The university noted that the more than a dozen demonstrations have taken place since October, largely without incident until this week. UT Austin said, in contrast, this one in particular expressed an intent to disrupt the campus and directed participants to break institutional rule, rules and occupy the university consistent with the national patterns. And guess who is also being hurt with all of these demonstrations? The students. You have a small group of rebel rousers causing other students on campus to have to miss important events as the school year is coming to a close. The University of Southern California has canceled its main stage graduation ceremony as part of new safety measures following this week's rowdy anti-Israel demonstrations on campus that saw more than 90 protesters arrested. Think about that. You've, you've spent four years studying to get your degree, and now your commencement ceremony, which was scheduled for May the 10th, has been canceled because of, of a bunch of student protesters on your campus, or, in, or as in, uh, reported in um, University of Texas, Austin, half of them weren't even affiliated with the school. 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Send your text, uh, your comments to the Furman Ford text line. I mean, I, I get back to the question I asked you earlier this week. What is our response? I say that if you're a, a foreign student and you're here on a scholarship and you get caught up in one of these protests and you refuse to, to move on when the police officer asks you to move on, that scholarship should be revoked immediately and you should be sent home never to return to America again, period, end of sentence. Am I wrong here? Is that too tough? And am I wrong to question why authorities at Columbia University, for example, feel like they need to negotiate with students to get their campus back? Why should you be negotiating with students to get campus back? Uh, um, I forget which school it was. It may, may have been Columbia, but uh, <laughs> there was uh, uh, videos being passed around where evidently the sprinkler system <laughs> came on right in the middle as you had these students just lying around on the on on this encampment area suddenly the sprinklers came on maybe that's what they need to do keep turning the sprinklers on run them off we're seeing massive growth in the south because people are leaving blue states in droves this may get more difficult to do as states are looking for ways to literally keep residents hostage Stick around as I share what states like California are doing to penalize those who leave. First, let me talk with you about our friends over at Furman Ford. It's never been more important to support locally run businesses owned by people who live here in our community. And that's what you get when you do business with Furman Ford. It's not some large corporation who doesn't even know about our community. When you go to Furman Ford, you're going to see the name Furman on the sign. Their name is on the sign because their name is on the line. They do business the right way. When you call, when you stop in, when you email, you're going to have access to a member of the Furman family, Jim Furman, Matthew Furman. They'll help you navigate the great deals they have on a, a, a good selection of pre-owned vehicles, pre-owned vehicles that you know have been checked out by Furman Ford, and they'll be dependable for you. They have a great inventory of new vehicles. And what's even better, when you drive your vehicle off the lot, you know that your money is staying right here in the upstate. It's not being sent back to a corporate headquarters somewhere in another state. It's right here supporting the community we live in. Let me encourage you to visit my friends at Furman Ford in Lawrence if you're looking to purchase a, a, another vehicle, whether it's pre-owned or new. Or if you need service on your existing vehicle, they can help you with that too. They service all makes and models. You do not have had to purchase your vehicle from Furman Ford either. Furman Ford, find them online. Check out their inventory at FurmanFord.com. Again, that's FurmanFord.com. If you're listening to 
just the truth today and you're outside of my home state uh, of South Carolina in the upstate of South Carolina, beware. Have you been hearing me talk about what a great place it is to live here in the Carolinas? Maybe you've thought about moving from one of the tax-rich blue states. Are you ready to pick up and move to another state? Well, you might have to think twice before you leave that broke blue state because they're coming up with some new creative ways to tax you when you cross the border. It's called an exit tax. (laughs) That's right, an exit tax. You would imagine this could only happen if you're leaving the country, right? But this tax exists for some individuals and businesses when they try to move out of a state, and the state that's leading the way, surprise, surprise, California. California is already known for having the most significant state income taxes in the country. has a maximum rate of 13.3%. There's a reason people are fleeing California to move to states including Florida, Nevada, Texas, and even here in in the Carolinas and Georgia. Uh, Some of these states, like Florida and Texas, have no state income taxes. Uh, Here in the Carolinas, everything is less expensive. California already has cities that include what they call mansion taxes for sales of real estate properties. This is why you've seen so many wealthy people move to Nevada. Business owners often tell, uh, tell the, 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 uh, the local media that California is one of the most difficult states to do business in right now. With all these factors, you have people who have built up their wealth. Now they're thinking of leaving the golden state because it's not so golden anymore. So how does California attempt to solve their massive deficit problem and create a new tax scheme that other broke blue states are likely to follow? They created this exit tax for those who want to move from the state. Here's the American dream. You wake up one day, you want to start a business in California. You take financial risk, family risk, legal risk, human resource risk, and you put your 401k and your house on the line. Over a period of years, you become very successful through your hard work, sweat, tears, that it takes to build that business while creating jobs and employing lots of Americans along the way. Then when you decide that there may be a better state to headquarter your business, a better state for you personally, and a more cost-effective place for your employees to live, the state can literally charge you an exit tax like a foreign country would if you move from California. So how does this exit tax work? This is a one-time tax. must be paid by all businesses and individuals who relocate outside of the state. The tax is based on the value of the business or the individual's assets, including property, stocks, and other investments, but not real estate. They'll get to real estate later, I I guarantee you. The exit tax is 0.4 tenths of a percent of an individual's net worth over $30 million in a tax year, no matter where it's located within California or other states within the U.S. or overseas. This amount is half to $15 million if a married taxpayer files a separate return for their, uh, uh, with their spouse. This exit tax follows you to another state for up to 10 years. Naturally, high tax, huge deficit states have a lot to lose from wealthy people leaving. Yeah, we're hearing the same thing for people who are Uh, A mass exodus from New York State, for example, heading to Florida. It's difficult, according to authorities, to assess the value of a business as market conditions change all the time, especially in a private market. If if you have a a, a private business selling to another private business. California is making what is being called an unprecedented policy decision here to essentially tax unrealized capital gains and preventing the real spirit of free market enterprise in order to collect their 13.3%, no matter what it does to the individual or the company involved. If you own a $40 million business and you have no other assets, you'll be forced to fire people, sell part of the business just to pay the tax. It's just another policy that seems short-term obvious with more negative, long-term, and not-so-obvious consequences, but yet they can't see it. They think that they're going to force people to stay in California. When tax policies like this get passed in one state, guess what? More follow, as uh, there's not an original idea. Other states, other blue states, who are seeing a mass exodus of their tax paying, uh, taxpayer base, they'll do the same thing. 
The 2017 tax cuts uh, of from Donald Trump's administration expire in less than two years. Do you want your unrealized capital gains taxed in the future? The exit tax is just the first step toward reaching deeper into the wallets of, of Americans. And again, those of you who are listening in California, I know some of you are, beware. Beware. On the Furman Ford text line, yours is welcome, 864-477-5639. Texter writes, Joey, the only reason the unions are wanting to take over manufacturing is because they support Democrat Party and the influence it has on elections would completely ruin the South. I really hope South Carolina manufacturing employees don't vote in the disastrous union. I hope they don't either. Uh, Texter. Joey, the reason Jill Stein doesn't get above 3% is that the climate crazies who would form her base largely work for the Biden administration. That was from Joel. Thank you, Joel. Jordan writes, on a much brighter note, the cicada shed is in full swing where I work in Greenwood. You can hear the low hum for miles. And Jordan included some up-close uh, photos of cicadas. I, I don't know that I've ever seen one that close. Thank you, Jordan, for those, those photos. Ray writes on the Furman Ford text line, Good morning, Joey. I've been reading two fascinating books by Jonathan Kahn called The Harbinger and The Harbinger Two. They point out the parallels between Old Testament Israel and current America. One of the most horrible sins of Israel was the act of child sacrifice. Thousands of children were sacrificed worshiping pagan gods. How is that different from the millions of children we're sacrificing to the gods of abortion and transgender mutilation? If we don't wake up and turn back to the one true God, we will suffer the same fate as Israel when they fell to Babylon. The good news is it's not too late. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Ray, and you're right. It's not too late. Uh, as, as, a, as a nation, we, we can turn back to God right now. Um, Susan writes, how many of the environmental ill protesters will be traveling to the congressional baseball game in fossil fuel-powered vehicles and wearing synthetic clothing and shoes made from petroleum uh, i'll susan most all of them uh, she says flaming hypocrites our text of encouragement today be fanatically positive and militantly optimistic if something is not to your liking change your liking that was a quote from rick steves and i don't know who rick steves is but i just like the quote <laughs> 864 477 joey 864 864- Four seven seven fifty six thirty nine. Your text messages are welcome on the Furman Ford text line. Um, as we we're talking about turning back to God, Peg and I went to a lunch meeting yesterday at the Poinsett Club in downtown Greenville. It was the Christian Businessmen's Association, and Hank Parker, the two-time bass uh bass master champion was the speaker i've heard of hank parker before but i'd never met him never heard him speak and boy what a testimony that man has he he talked about growing up in um in a middle class family but his dad was an alcoholic his dad was abusive his, so much so that his mom left and took his brother and sister with her left him with the dad he was dyslexic, couldn't read. Seventeen years old, he, seventeen years old, and couldn't read. His dad found Christ though one day, and he said it was like a switch had been uh, had been turned off. And his dad then started talking about Christ and the gospel to Hank. He resisted though. Again, he's a seventeen year old who had dropped out of high school. All he wanted to do was fish. And what an amazing story as he uh, talked about eventually finding Christ himself. His his dad was killed not too long after in an automobile accident. But just prior to his dad's death, he had talked to their pastor about the idea that if I, if, if pastor, if I happen to die before my son, will you please continue to? to talk with him about Christ. He's lost. He needs Christ. Uh, of course, the end of the story, uh, Hank Parker did find Christ. Uh, 
He had a fabulous career and uh, one of the first to, to really make it big uh, in the Bassmaster Classic. And lived his dream, was paid to fish. He, t- he talked about how, uh, how life changed so suddenly when people were, uh, these, these companies were giving him fishing gear, rod, rods and reels and, and boats and, and trucks to pull those boats, things that he had always wanted but could not afford. And then suddenly he makes it big in bass fishing, and they're literally giving them to him for, their, for his endorsement. If you ever have a chance to listen to Hank Parker, uh, do it. He's very inspiring. The Vermont House has approved legislation requiring firearms that are privately made from kits or by 3D printers to carry serial numbers in an effort to crack down on what is called ghost guns. Heavy penalties will be imposed if the law is violated. Details in just a moment. Uh, portions of the day show made possible by Discounted Appliance Warehouse. Jeff, Johnny, Kyle, the whole team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they're literally waiting for you to help you with your next appliance. If you're tired of buying appliances from inexperienced sales staff, head to Pickens right now. Whether you're replacing a broken appliance or maybe you're just upgrading, maybe you're remodeling the kitchen and you need all new appliances The team at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, they have the knowledge to give you the confidence that you're going to make the right deal. Appliances are expensive. You can't afford to to not buy the right appliance. When you shop with my friends at Discounted Appliance Warehouse, there's never any shipping or supply issues. They have over 1,500 appliances in stock. Quite often, you can buy it today and use it today. Let me encourage you to head over to Pickens if you need a new appliance, whether it's a refrigerator, a stove, dishwasher, microwave, Washer and dryer, they, uh, they are proud to offer Speed Queen, the only washer and dryers with manufacturer's warranties that covers parts and labor for up to seven years. Check them out in Pickens or online at dawpickens.com, dawpickens.com. Federal appeals court has upheld a decision to revoke an Alaska man's pilot certificate after he delivered marijuana by plane to retail stores around the state. The man said that Congress couldn't regulate commerce happening within the state where, by the way, marijuana is legal. Federal Aviation Administration disagreed. Meanwhile, speaking of pot, Chris Goldstein was quoted in the New Jersey Advanced Media saying, hopefully they'll have a garden at the State House and the White House by the end of the year. Now, Mr. Goldstein is an organizer with a legal marijuana group called Normal who helped plant marijuana plants at the New Jersey State Capitol this week. The group is protesting New Jersey's prohibition on homegrown pot. That's what we need is uh, a garden full of pot at the White House. The Arkansas Times reported that $2,113,198 was the amount people in Arkansas spent to purchase 630 pounds of marijuana products on April the 20th, which was the unofficial pot holiday. That's almost triple the daily average of 780000 for dispensary sales. I mean, I still find it hard to talk about the fact that we have states that pot is legal. When I was in New York a few weeks back, walking down the street, you could smell it on every corner, just like people smoking cigarettes. And as we're talking about being wasted, a, a Belgian man charged with drunk driving, has had the charges dismissed after he proved that he has auto brewery syndrome. You ever heard of this? It's a rare condition that causes carbohydrates in his stomach to ferment into alcohol, which results in signs of intoxication. According to medical professionals, there's only about 20 people who've ever been diagnosed with ABS. This man happened to be pulled over for uh, what police officers thought was drunk driving. The Vermont House has approved legislation requiring firearms that are privately made from kits or by 3D printers to carry serial numbers. This is their effort to crack down on what they uh, call ghost guns. Those who use a gun without a serial number in the commission of a violent crime would face up to five years in prison and an additional fine. In other firearm news, the Alabama Senate unanimously approved legislation prohibiting financial institutions from declining a credit card transaction for a firearm purchase. The bill also prohibits government agencies from creating or maintaining 
list of firearm owners, which they shouldn't be doing anyway. The Alabama House Judiciary Committee approved legislation creating criminal penalties for parents if their children bring a firearm to school. One final note as we're talking about state legislatures, what is happening in the Minnesota State House? The Minnesota Reformer says there are six sitting Minnesota lawmakers who have been arrested while in office. Five were arrested on driving while intoxicated charges, and the sixth, Senator Nicole Mitchell, you may have heard this story earlier, was arrested this week on a first-degree burglary charge. And the kicker? None of them have resigned. They just can't give up the power, can they? That's it for today's edition of Just the Truth. Hey, I appreciate you joining me in the Ph.D. Weight Loss and Nutrition Studio. To lose weight for the last time, visit myphdweightloss.com. If you haven't joined their mailing list, please do so. Visit joeyhudson.com. Click on the Connect with Joey button so that you can receive our emails with the most up-to-date news. Also, find me on YouTube. Just search Joey Hudson. Uh, or send me a quick text message. If you can't find it, I'll send you the link. I had a great time last night at the Oconee County Republican Men's Club. They had a third congressional district forum for the candidates in that uh, race. If you're in the third congressional district in South Carolina, you need to get to know these. You, you're going to have a tough choice. You've got, I think it's seven seven total candidates uh, and in a debate, this was my second one this week. Uh, I was at the Anderson County Republican Women's Club on Monday for a lunch forum with the same candidates again last night. And the Oconee County Republican Men's Club, what a great club. I, I happen to be a member, so I'm a little biased here. But Jose Cabreras and Gary Kaysen and a lot of others just do a great job with the Oconee County Republican Men's Club, if you happen to be in that area, you should join. And uh, they have great speakers every month, and they're just educating. They're, they're uh, talking about voter registration, uh, voter turnout, which is very important. Uh, they also, Oconee County has the Republican Women's Club. Pat Murray is, is the uh, driving force behind that group. So a lot going on in my second home of Oconee County, but had a great time last night seeing so many people uh, there. Hey, appreciate you spending a few minutes of your day with me. Keep those comments coming via the Furman Ford text on 864-477-JOEY, 864-477-5639. Keep the emails coming to joey at joeyhudson.com. We're back again next week. Hope you'll plan to be with us starting on Monday. Until then, remember, God's got this. He's still in control.